Hey everyone, what's up? James here from 9 to 5 Software and today um we're going to dive into something a little different. So, I've been seeing a lot of comments from you guys asking about editing software that, you know, doesn't require a supercomputer to run smoothly. And I totally get it. Not everyone has access to like a high-end setup, right? So, I've spent the past couple of weeks um testing out a bunch of different video editors to see which ones perform best on, let's say, more modest PCs. And let me tell you, I found some pretty solid options that won't make your computer, you know, gasp for air every time you try to cut a clip. I'm really excited to share these finds with you guys because I think no matter what your rig looks like, everyone should have the chance to, you know, create awesome content without the gear holding them back. And hey, before we jump in, just a quick reminder, I've dropped links to all the software we'll be talking about today down in the description. Make sure to check those out if something catches your eye. All right, let's get into it. Here's my take on the best video editors for low-end PCs. Hope you find it super helpful. All right, so let's talk about Adobe Premiere Rush, which, you know, I've been using quite a bit on um, some less powerful PCs, and I have to say, it's surprisingly good for what it's meant to do. Now, um, if you're not familiar with it, Rush is essentially a more streamlined version of Premiere Pro. And what's really cool is that it's kind of designed for people on the go or for those who don't have you know, a super high-end machine at their disposal. Now, one of the things I love about Rush is just how uh, intuitive it is. You don't need to be a video editing pro to dive in. The interface is really clean and it doesn't feel overwhelming. And that's a big plus, especially when, you know, you're on a lower end PC that might struggle with more complex software. But just because it's simple, um, that doesn't mean it's not powerful. You've still got a decent amount of features. You can do your basic cuts, you can add transitions, um, work with audio, throw in some color correction. It's all just really user-friendly. Um, Performance-wise, on a less beefy PC, Premiere Rush is pretty smooth, which is, you know, definitely a big selling point. You don't get those uh, annoying lags or crashes that you might experience with more demanding programs. Yeah, there are some limits, like the number of video tracks you can work with, but for straightforward projects, you're really not going to feel too boxed in. So, in conclusion... I've got to say, for anyone out there with a lower-end PC who still wants to make some quality video content, Premiere Rush is a solid choice. It balances ease of use with a suite of features that are more than enough for, you know, your everyday video projects without making your computer um, throw a fit. It's not the end-all, be-all video added, added, but for what it is, it's definitely up there on my list. Now, if you've been struggling with software that's just dragging your system down, you'll know how frustrating that can be, right? But mm. Filmar X, it's designed to be pretty lightweight, and it doesn't need a super powerful computer to run smoothly, which is honestly a huge plus. All right, so first off, the interface, it's super user-friendly. If you're just starting out, you won't feel overwhelmed. And if you've got a bit of experience under your belt, you'll appreciate the intuitive layout. There are these drag and drop elements that make it really simple to add effects and transitions without putting too much strain on your system. And I think that's particularly cool because you're not sacrificing creativity for performance. You get the best of both worlds. Now, let's talk about features because um, Filmora X has a solid range to offer. Its text and titles library is quite decent, allowing you to add some neat looking graphics to your videos. Also, the motion tracking, pretty impressive for a software that runs so well on less powerful PCs. And you've got your color grading tools, audio ducking, and mm, video stabilization. All those sweet enhancements that can really take your content to the next level. But, okay, it's not all sunshine and rainbows, right? I mean, while Filmora X is great for less resource-intensive work, it might not have mm. super advanced features that pro editors might be looking for. But as an all-rounder for someone with a budget setup, it's hard to beat. It's got a free version with a watermark, and, and the paid licenses won't break the bank. All in all, for a low-end PC, it's definitely up there with the best choices without making your machine crawl. Give it a shot, and I think you'll be pretty pleased with what you can create. For those of you out there working with a, you know, a lower end PC and looking for a solid video editor, you might wanna consider OpenShot. It's, um, it's actually a pretty nifty little program, if you ask me. So OpenShot is open source. Yes. Which means it's totally free, no hidden costs, and it's packed with features that, um, that you usually only see in the more expensive software. It's like, you get unlimited tracks, which is super valuable for complex projects, and it includes loads of transitions and effects so you can really get creative without spending a penny. 
Now, when you first open it up, uh, you'll notice the interface is uh, pretty straightforward. It might not look super polished like some of the high-end editors, but it's intuitive. For a beginner, it's really approachable. You can drag and drop your clips into the timeline, easily slice them up, and there's even some basic animation capabilities with keyframes, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool for a free tool. It does feel a bit laggy on, you know, on really low-end hardware, but it's manageable and significantly better than... Um, trying to run something like Adobe Premiere on a system that's not built for it. One thing to um, keep in mind with OpenShot is that it's like really light on resources. And I mean, we're talking a program that can comfortably run on older hardware without constantly crashing or, you know, making you want to pull your hair out. So, but um, because it's lighter, there are compromises. The rendering times can be a bit slow and the preview playback isn't always the smoothest when you're working with HD content. Um, but for basic editing, it's totally fine. So to wrap it up for anyone who's looking for an, an easy to use, mm -hmm. reliable, and most importantly, free video editing software, I definitely recommend giving OpenShot a shot. It's not, it's not without its drawback, sure, but it's a solid choice for basic to moderately complex projects, especially if you're on an older PC or just starting out. All right, hope that helps some of you guys out there. What, what first caught my eye about Shotcut is that it's open source. Which is awesome, right? It means that this tool is completely free to use and you're not going to be hit with any of those unexpected costs just when you start getting comfortable with the software. Now, as soon as you get into the nitty gritty of Shotcut, you'll notice that it has a super straightforward interface. And I think um, for beginners, this is key because you don't want to be overwhelmed with too many buttons and options right from the get-go. But don't let that simplicity fool you though because under the hood, Shotcut is packing some really powerful features. It supports a wide range of video formats and resolutions, including 4K, which is kind of impressive for a software that doesn't eat up all your system's resources. All right, let's talk about the real me here. Performance on low-end PCs. Look, I've tried running Shotcut on an older laptop, and honestly, I was pretty floored by how smooth it was. There was no lags or crashes, which, trust me, is a huge deal when you're working on a longer project and you just can't afford any setbacks. And yeah, it might not have all the high-end effects and sophisticated tools that some of the big boys in the video editing software world have, but it's super reliable and it's got all the basics you need to create some really polished looking videos. So to wrap things up, if you're starting out or you're strapped for cash or maybe your PC just can't handle the more heavyweight programs, um, Shotcut could be the perfect fit for you. It's got a gentle learning curve. It's not going to make your computer crawl to a standstill and you can still get some really professional looking results. Definitely a thumbs up from me for anyone in need of a solid, low-demand video editor. So um, let's talk about Luminar Neo, which is, you know, a pretty interesting choice if you're working on a lower-end PC. Now, right off the bat, I've got to mention, this isn't your typical video editing software, but hear me out. It's actually more focused on photo editing. However... It's got these amazing capabilities that can really boost your productivity, especially if your system isn't, you know, top of the line. Now, um, one of the best things about Luminar Neo is just how lightweight it is. You don't need a beast of a PC to run it smoothly. That's like super important when you're not working with uh, high spec gear. The interface is pretty intuitive and it won't, you know, bog down your system. I mean, you can still have a bunch of other programs open and not worry too much about Luminar Neo bringing your PC to a crawl, which is um, quite the relief. The software packs some um, really impressive AI tools. We're talking stuff that can like enhance photos with just a click sky, skin retouching structure. It's all there. Now, for a video editor, you might be thinking, but James, that's photo stuff, right? Well, yeah, but check this out. You can batch edit your thumbnails or any still images you're gonna use in your videos faster than, you know, using more resource heavy programs saves you a ton of time. And let's be honest, time is pretty precious. Lastly, I've gotta mention that while Luminar Neo isn't, you know, a traditional video editing software, it's still super useful in the overall video creation process on a low end PC. I'd say it kind of complements your video editor rather than replaces it. So if you're looking to up your game without upgrading your hardware just yet, um, definitely give Luminar Neo a shot for the photo editing side of things. It's a solid choice. Really helps in getting that professional look without melting your CPU. Um, yeah, I think it's definitely worth considering. All right, guys, um, that 
pretty much wraps up my roundup of the best video editor options for low-end PCs. You know, it's kind of amazing what you can do even if you're not rocking the latest and greatest hardware, right? Anyway, if any of these tools caught your eye, remember, you can find the links right down there in the description. Go ahead and, you know, give them a try, see which one works for you. And hey, if you've been using something different or um, you have some tips for running editing software on less powerful machines, I'd love to hear about it. Please just drop a comment below. Now, if you found this video helpful or interesting, why not give it a like? I mean, it really helps out with the channel and um, the mysterious YouTube algorithm gods. And speaking of helping out, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and, oh, the notification bell too, so um, you don't miss any of the new content, especially if you're into all things software. And hey, while you're here, why not check out some of the other videos I've made? I've got a bunch of tutorials, reviews, and even some tips and tricks that might just help you on your software journey. All right, I think that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you spending your time with me today. And, and um, see you in the next video. Keep editing, stay creative, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers.